Hey everybody, we are your Overwatch, and this is a fun little format that we've put together in order to make these podcast style videos that we like to do, because we want to keep doing them, and a whole bunch of Overwatch news has come out, we've been making videos about it, and we're excited to kind of discuss between us the huge game-changing meta patch stuff going on in the PTR and what we think about it. So, I of course am Frito, it's our first visual representation on the channel, so I hope you're not too shocked, but, uh, and then flanking me is my friends. Hello, friends. Hi. Hi. How you doing? I'm the guy that always plays Genji and does them videos because it's the only character that I use. And, and your that's... name is? Liam or Weagle. Okay. At the Legal they, Weagle. They'll need to know that. Yeah. yeah that helps. And uh, I'm Eddie the Chump. I'm, all I can say for the last 24 hours is McCree for some reason. I don't know why that is. But all I can utter, apart from this podcast, unusually, is McCree. So, welcome, everybody. So, my standpoint on this patch is that it, it, even if some of it seems a bit drastic and it's so much at one time, typically, as we've said in our previous podcast type video, you make one change and there's a ripple effect in the entire game. Like, you change this and all of a sudden five characters emerge. Now they're changing three things at once, or in fact, more than that. Like, six things at once. So, it's a massive change. But in general, I think... Some of the things that I think are surefire wins, can't debate about this at all, is the change to overtime, is the change to, what's the other universal one that they had? I had it at the tip of my tongue. Uh, single pick. Single pick and competitive, correct. I advocated for limited pick. I can go on and on and on by why that could be cool, but I can see why it isn't good now. I think in the future, it might be interesting to let them even have a map that's specifically designed for unlimited pick with a separate game mode. Obviously King of the Hill does not work with unlimited pick. I, I understand that completely, but I think with specific objective modes on specific types of maps, it might be interesting to have the variance of unlimited pick because it allows for more styles of team comps. Whereas single pick, it's sort of the same kind of comp, but more heroes are represented, if that makes sense. So less styles of comps, more heroes, whereas in limited pick, you can have like a five Tracer, one Lucio comp, which is completely different than the standard comp of like tanks, like two, 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 right? Tank, tank, sport, sport, DPS, DPS. Like it, it plays completely differently. And I like that in Overwatch, but I see why it's a huge hassle for the pro players. Yeah, I was going to say, I think for me, the main thing is I think single pick, will get more people interested in competitive. I think it will make it more marketable, more approachable for people to watch and to commentate, which me and you spoke about yesterday. And I just think overall for the game to do well, it's just a better choice more than it, more than even how good it actually works. I think it's good for the game itself. For the esports viewing experience, because that's what I was, I was going to say. You need to separate those two things out because I don't really have a problem with unlimited uh, unlimited pick in terms of playing it. Um, at I our did, level of play. Yeah. But, but at, at the pro level, level play, I mean, how do they get DPS out of two Tracers, two Lucios, and two Winstons? I don't know. Like, players that aren't as good as pros barely can kill things like that. But if you have top level aim and you can hit all your Lucio shots and maximize Tracer, then all of a sudden it's viable. So that's the way that works. Whereas I need my Pharah Rockets, which do 120 damage. Thank you very much. Yeah, I just, I think that there's a difference between the game being a good game and the game being popular to watch as a, as a sport. I think those two things are separate. And I think that this move definitely helps it with the sport, especially in the commentating. I also think if you look at other games that are popular, certain players become famous for using certain champions in league or certain heroes or whatever. And I think that really adds to the marketability, you know, I, and we have um, made a few videos mocking, um, people who automatically pick a certain character, I won't mention who, um, but auto making automatic picks, oh, this is who I play, this is who I'm most comfortable, and not paying attention to what the team actually needs and all that kind of stuff. So single pick kind of plays into that a little bit in terms of the marketing of the game. You, you might watch Seagull because he's the best Genji in the world. You might watch whoever because they're the best X character in the world. And I think that that is part of the marketing machine that can help the game take off as an eSport. I, I have to say, I enjoy playing the game far more than I enjoy watching it. But with this change, maybe that'll, that too will change. Um, I don't know. I, I, I do like the fact that there's more heroes used. I have to be honest. I, I, I do like that 
there's more variance. I'm also not a huge fan of doubling up on certain roles like double Zaria or double, double Winston in certain positions. I think it's kind of cheesy, actually. And I agree with you, Frido, that it probably could have been worked out the unlimited pick on certain places, certain maps and stuff like that. It could be fun, but I think in general, it's a good move. It, you know, just in my opinion. So moving on from that, I think is the hero balance changes, which we it's, I think some of this might be repeat from our videos, but that might be okay. Cause we'll be able to discuss it. And sometimes we might disagree. Like I might make a video and you guys might disagree on um, specific things, but we've got, the main ones are Diva, Zenyatta, McCree. Small change to Mercy, but she already was. It's. I don't think it's effectively changing her from for most of the game. But those are the main ones. Am I forgetting anybody? Did I, anyone get a stealth buff? I, anyone that can self heal kind of did. I, personally, I don't think yeah. that made a huge change. Maybe you disagree, but I haven't really noticed. It just sort of shifts around who gets their ultimates when. Yeah, uh, maybe the pros can tell the difference. Like at the three minute mark, he's able to. No, like that that doesn't matter to me. But yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I think they're definitely, definitely the the biggest changes. Obviously, a new character being in there ah. makes a makes a huge difference. So we can say that there's balance changes. But she kind of she divides opinion, and she but she does shift the whole support category around. But I would argue that I, I don't know what order you want to take this in, but I th I actually think the most important buff um and the the one that will send shockwaves through the pro scene and through the competitive scene is actually zenyatta I, I you could argue that the diva buff is a huge deal and that the mccree buff is a huge deal but i actually think having zen picked more often changes the game in a more fundamental way than any of the others and i kind of like that i like zen as a character i like a zen being on my team um, obviously, because I, you know, I play McCree a lot. I play DPS, so it's obviously a huge benefit to me. But I, I think he's a cool character, and it, I was really sad that he wasn't in the game that much. I will say though, having 200 health and having three quarters of that being shields might be a bit too much. I don't know about that. I want to see what you guys think, but that, that I mean, that's good. crazy. Three quarters of your health can regenerate. That is. That's pretty I crazy. Mean, the first thing that I want to throw in is that these are potential patches, right? So this is the current PTR bill, but they will probably evaluate this week and go from there on what they really want to do. That's true. Yeah, that's fair enough. I do think the Zenyatta buff's good, but I think it makes support way more interesting within the whole game. I think the McCree buff will change the game more than Zenyatta. Or maybe not more, but in terms of DPS, like he's going to be back into it. If he's how he is in the PTR build right now, he's going to be straight back into the matter of the game well let's go one by one go one by one I'll, 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 I'll talk about zen first um i think zen is a better designed character than mercy first of all i don't think we necessarily it's it's i struggle with this because players with less skill would pref would like mercy existing because she to me the value she holds is something like 10 health packs essentially if she's on your team she is like a mobile health pack station for your team. And now with 50% boost, it, it, it helps players who don't, ha who don't have aim to play Zen, to play Mercy, fine, she exists, whatever. But I think Zen helps the combat differently than Mercy, and I'll explain why. With Mercy, you want her pocketing something on your side. Whereas Zen outputs his DPS, obviously, but nerfs the thing over there. So that means the effect of that nerf doesn't have to be isolated with your character. So that's sort of a um, ghost buff. What are we calling that? Uh, ghost buff, right? It's sort of a ghost buff to characters that want to be out of the death ball. And I feel a lot of these changes have buffed characters that play out of the death ball. I think Genji all of a sudden is better just because of that Zen buff. I think Genji's better with Ana as well, but I think Zen's just better because Zen puts the harmony on Genji, Discord's the thing he's fighting. I mean, the, the old meta, the first meta of the game is when Zen was overpowered originally, and that's what they did. That is kind of back in a way, and I like that because Genji was very niche in the pro meta, and I think in the overall game. So anything that kind of shifts the standard death ball play style, I kind of prefer because I get a little bored with 
Reinhardt's picked 75% of the time, and it's always in that death ball, because as a Widow player even, that allows me to play outside of the death ball versus death ball thing. Because if it's death ball versus death ball, then you just want Junkrat spamming into it. But if you have characters that are trying to make plays more dynamically in sort of, I would say, like a standard FPS way where there isn't this massive shield like, oh, you can't shoot through this, and it just moves wherever you want, then I can sort of battle things more individually, if that makes sense. And maybe that makes it a less team synergy game and more individually skilled. But I always thought for the past few months, we noticed that right away, that it's very hard to be individually skilled in the game. I think this patch puts that all aside. Like, it's completely different now. Now, uh, there's yeah. a lot of ways you can be individually skilled, especially with McCree, Zenyatta, and D.Va just scooping things up. And another thing, this is a separate point, maybe we'll explain it later, but with D.Va and Zen, Zen's buff is more useful, easier to use, does more, and D.Va, ultimates all of a sudden are more counterable where mm -hmm. they haven't been before. So that puts it more on your fundamental aiming skill. So your FPS skill is slightly more important because you have a better chance to dodge ultimates and not get wiped by them. So there's, there's a number of topics to unpack there. Like, uh, so I don't know how we want to handle this. I, I, I quite want to segue into the McCree buff because I have said since the beginning of the channel that I would prefer a McCree that, was, that relied more on my left click skill than the right click spam when right click was really good. Then they nerf right click to kind of where it should be. I think it should do 300 damage just so it's five bullets to kill a Reaper, not six. Um, I think that should be buffed a little bit, but if this buff is in it, I don't worry about that anymore. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm really not concerned about it. It's, it's only use is reliable damage to a large area, say a Reinhardt shield over and over again. Okay, fair enough. Okay, that's maybe what it should be. His left click, having its range extended further so you're more stable as a DPS. See, I, even after McCree got nerfed, I would be able to play certain games in certain scenarios where I would still kill everything with left clicks. I would, ju I would just go off and I would leverage practiced aim with the character against enemy players and it, I could have high impact games with McCree. Now, he's much more stable and you can kind of dominate, actually, especially if you're synergizing well with anyone else. But on your own, you can kind of dominate. So I like that, that he's a left-click warrior now. I've always wanted him to be that way. I've made arguments about it before. How they've changed it in that they've made his damage, his full damage go a lot further and then drop off a lot quicker to where it's like six headshots at like extreme range or whatever with McCree. I understand that they're doing that because they don't want McCree to be a Widow deleter, basically. Like double headshot from miles away, deleted a Widow. I actually don't think that's a problem. I've never thought that's a problem. Because as McCree, you shouldn't peek a Widow, all right? Unless you're within medium range. You, sh you just shouldn't. And if it's a really great Widow, you saw this at the pro level when the game first came out, that the best Widows were incredible, all right? And you, can, you cannot kill her in one shot and she can kill you in one. So it's, it was even risky doing it at medium range where McCree was actually supposed to be viable. So I don't think the McCree Widow thing, the damage dropping off a of civilian, I don't think they can do whatever they want, but I think they have this concern that he's just going to be able to delete people. Maybe from, remember when closed beta, he was really good. Like he could just do that. He could do that. Like he could, and they, they don't want that to ever happen again. So fair enough. Where he is now, I'd... Obviously, I'm a McCree player. I really like. I really like where he is. I've made arguments for it. Um, I know that Frido thinks that he might be the the range for his full damage might be slightly too far. I don't. I don't know. I think the game's too fast to. I think the game's too fast and too much happening at one time in a team fight. To, to be finickety about that, actually. I think if you're worried about, what should he kill a Widow? No, okay, fair enough. Everything else is fair game. Because there's so many more options in the DPS category, aside from McCree. Like, I haven't used Soldier in the PTR just to see how they match up, because my Soldier, for a long time, after McCree was enough, was way better than my McCree. Like, I would be way more consistent with damage and kills, and, you know, people say... He can't really kill anything because he's got Helix Rockets. I was good with Helix Rockets, whatever. I haven't compared the two. But I have a feeling this is where McCree should be, and I want to know what, what you guys think. 
Well, that's what I was trying to say ages ago, but I, I went from Zenyatta into McCree because I, I think McCree changes the mess at least as much as Zenyatta because Farah becomes pretty pointless, especially if you've got a soldier and a McCree on a team. Farah doesn't stand a chance. He's just going to get shot straight out of the sky. So I think that that is equally as much as Zenyatta. And, and I didn't really get to talk about him, but I feel like he's completely changed the support meta now, whereas you're going to have a Zenyatta and a Lucio and a Zenyatta or a Mercy. I don't think you'll have Mercy and Lucio anymore because I think Zenyatta would always be a pick there. So that's what I wanted to add from before. But On slower base teams, right? Because if Lucio, the thing that he has that Zen won't is speed boost. And, and yeah, teams yeah. can exploit that. But I think Zen's easier and, to plug in. Lucio's ult is also very good. You know, it's like, I, it's, it's like you know, will McCree's flashbang ever be not useful? Think about how much time you're going to get. Now that Zen's more viable, right? Say you've got a Zen and a Lucio, and Lucio boosts you all onto the point, right? And you're killing everyone, and even Zen's killing everyone. And then Lucio's ult runs out, and you pop Zen's ult, right? And then everyone's invincible again. Well, right. Zaya's ult is now with Zen in heavy in the meta. Zaya's ult is almost useless. Like it's uh, not almost useless. Like obviously, if you don't have Zen's ult or whatever, it can still be leveraged really well. Or if you're at alt advantage or whatever, great. Well. Yeah, great. But you know, it's Zen is just a direct counter to that. It's just it, oh, we've all been sucked in it. Well, never mind. They but can't with, with graviton but. with not graviton. Um. Defense Matrix as well being so good, which I'll get to in yeah. a second. But yeah, yeah. Generally speaking, the big team white ults alts are harder to do in this build. Yeah, I would agree with that. Yeah, I'd agree too. The the other thing was McCree's drop off at the minute. It's like I don't know how much damage he does, but this is the damage. Seventy, seventy. No damage. Right. Right. Whereas, and I think I agree with Frida where it should be a little bit more curved, curved towards the you know three quarters of the way through. The distance, three quarters of that distance, just start curving it off a little because bit because otherwise Farah is useless. I think. Yeah, yeah. I mm -hmm. I one shot a Farah yesterday in the head because you got to think too guess. with Zen being prominent and the Mercy exactly fifty percent buff. Mercy. Exactly by the way, yeah. Right now, Mercy, you should always be on McCree as far as I'm concerned. You should that that is I where agree, you should actually. be damage buffing because you can insta headshot things now. <laughs> one shot headshot <laughs> yeah. from medium range. It's a deagle. What can yeah. I say? Yes, go, Deagle. It's what I always wanted. Brings back memories. Yeah, it does. Some memories of that game we used it, to play. And with that, that's the other thing too. The game is more fraggy, whereas yeah, with just a few yeah. changes before, it was tank heavy and healer heavy, and that's what made Widow useless because this long to take body shots needs three body shots. They can heal in time. They can just walk away. Oh, body shot. I'll just walk away from that. That. So now then this, I think this patch widow is a bit better and actually has a place, but far all of a sudden doesn't other than the fact that she can get space, but I don't, Oh, that's the only little Does thing. Does Diva do that better now? Does Diva do the taking space job better? I yeah. think she does. Let's go to Diva. I think Diva's fine. Obviously Diva is a real, like if you, if you're worried about McCree, right? McCree can't move, all right? Divas now destroy McCree. Like, they can really single him out. And it happened to me a number of times where I wasn't being pocketed by a Mercy. I didn't have my team around me. I was just trying the character out. And, you know, this is in the PTR. We can't read that much into it. But I was being, like, every Diva saw me and was like, I have to kill you. What about headshotting her, though? I, I was going to say, I don't want to say, is it just mad because bad? But, I mean... No, no, no. It, it's, it's, it's one of those things that you're not used... To, what it is, I'll explain, is I'm not used to divas doing that. I'm not used to seeing a diva and her being so aggressive. Because of the defense matrix change, I'm not used to her doing that. I'm used to her not doing very much, actually. So when she singles a character out and is like, I can survive being in amongst them like a battering ram because of my defense matrix changes and I can kill this one character and get out and still live. I'm not used to the players doing that. I'm not, I'm just like, I'm put on the back foot where I'm like, well, you should be, you should fear me. Right. But no, they don't care. And I kind of like that for the character and I like it for diva players. It's just something that I'll have to adjust to. Yes. Headshotting her. Let's be fair. If I'm being damage boosted, she dies in about three shots, you know, but, it's it's still something. It's another thing to consider. So when Fr Frido's like it's a frag heavy meta, I kind of agree with him. But I think Diva's changes are good. I think her defense matrix recharges a little bit too fast though. Just a touch. It's it's too good right now. I was it gonna. Is good. I 
I think this will probably go up before the video, I guess, that I'm going to make on D.Va, but I agree. And I used D.Va before this in her very narrow role that it was before where she can dive turrets and battering ram take space. She still does that, but now she also intermittently between the fight because defense major comes back so quick essentially especially if you you utilize it right that you uh you're constantly being able to mitigate damage right so like you can use it to fly in and then you'll shoot for like let's say five seconds or so do 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 do, do kill your thing and by the time you you want it up it's up like it's almost never up when you don't when you need it right because you're always going to be yeah. using it shooting flying and in that progress, it's up all the time. So that means you can essentially nullify everything over there. <laughs> like, they they can't stop you. And that makes Bastion really bad. It makes Farah's ult really hard to ever find. Like, Eddie had a full flank on a, a, a whole team as McCree. And the, the Diva just turned around. Defense Matrix is ready all the time. So I think the recharge rate... I, I don't know how I feel about the entire capacity of the fuel or whatever we're calling it, the energy component. Maybe the it's it's like a four second thing. Maybe that's fine, but the recharge rate after using it's a bit too fast. Or what they could do is tie in her jet fac, her boosters to that yeah. too in some way. You might need more then. You but might then need more base, but they they draw from the same real right. That's actually that might be quite smart. a smart idea. Yeah. Yeah. Because then uh, when you're doing both at the same time, it's going faster, right? And then yeah, and, yeah. No, they, I like that. That's a good change. And then when you defense like matrix that. and use it up, you can't fly then. <laughs> yeah, she'd be pun she'd be punishable then for yeah. doing unwise things. I feel like she's a little bit. I've also got to say, I don't. When she jumps, her pistol is is it was always good, but she's very dangerous now. And then when she gets out, she's still really dangerous. Even though she's got low health, she's one fifties, just like squishy or whatever. She's still dangerous. You know, like she's not. She's, you shouldn't just dismiss her when she's out of her robot because she, she can kill you. Pretty, she has about 100 DPS per second without headshots. But her, so yeah, like her little, I mean, yeah. It, it'll be similar to maybe like Soldier in some way. Um, he does more, I believe, but he has a bigger spread. Hers I didn't is projectiles. Know both as pilot. Is that what they've done as well? They're both the pilot. No, but I think no. Eddie's just realizing how decent oh, it was. Right, how good. Yeah, I guess no one would have noticed it before because she wasn't used that much, right? So now that she's been no, used. I knew I knew she was good. I'm just I'm just saying that because because the rest of her has been buffed, that the buffed robot state with the out of the you know in her just her suit state, those two together is actually really 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 good. I I knew she was good before. I knew she was dangerous before, but it's now like. If, if you're trying to take her down, you might be low on HP. And all, she, all it takes is, oh, well, I've taken her down. She's jumped out. And it's, a, it's not a, a consistent angle. She jumps out at different angles. She can just jump out and headshot you. She yeah. can control which, which way, I think. If you put the movement, I believe, then you'll kind of jump either left oh, or right. Oh, right. Okay. All right. So, yeah, she can there's, – there's scope for her to – do outplays there which I, I don't know if i'm necessarily against you know if we're i can't on one hand be like mccree's really good because it allows my superior skill to headshot everything and then on the other side be like but her her mechanical skill is totally out of order i, I don't know if i can do that i you, i genuinely want the best for each each hero i want them to be great and fun to use like a big joy of this game is that everything's fun to do you know for different skill levels and different roles like everything has to be fun i think she's fun now but i don't know if she's just a little bit too good oh, i don't as, as, i think it's worth mentioning again that these are potential patches aren't they we, we apparently it's going out a week today the 21st i read somewhere i don't know McCree how will be very similar to how he is in this i, I think, think i think they may add a bit of drop off i think diva might not be quite as strong as, as she is but i think zen may be where he's going to be released. You know what's interesting about the Zen buff? Me and Frito were talking, uh, the Zen buff, sorry, uh, that was interesting. We were like, well, because McCree's now really good, um, it, of, you know, just because of himself and also because Zen is going to be used more. We were like, so what happens to Reaper now? And oddly, I think he's still going to be used because although his spread, like Frito was saying, was designed more for your bigger targets, you know, in the tank meta, he was, he just replaced McCree. Like when the right click got nerfed, like you just saw a lot more double reapers and all that kind of stuff. I still think he's going to be used because of Zen. 
I think if Zen's there, then he's viable, especially on control point or capture point or whatever. Maybe like, it's more of a higher end character because people are smaller, like you say, less tank. So if you're better, I and mean, it makes Reaper harder to use, but potentially but he's viable. Yeah, but because he's he's viable, not yes, his damage is going to be good. He's going to be able to one shot things. But actually, what makes him really viable is that he can be like, "Ha! I've just killed your DPS, and now you can't kill me." That's incredible. Being able to do that is and, incredible. And, and, and like I said before, he's out of the death ball, right? So he's, yeah. he gets buffed by Zen, just by pure fact that he is uh, in your face brawler type guy. Yeah. Uh, I, you know, I think, I think he's still going to see use. I really do. Which is, I guess, is a good place for us to be, actually. Is, yeah. Is when all of a sudden yeah. these guys, the characters are more applicable rather than standard. The more standard characters are, are assumed to be, Arguably, the the game is in a worse state. Um, where oh, the diva uh, ult, another thing that is changed. So that's another huge value to her, which makes her good, in my opinion, on offense. With all these things considered, I think she's good on offense and defense now. Before she was just good on offense against static defense. Now I think she's good all the time because she blocks ults, blocks damage, can affect. It. It, it's so long; it's almost as if she's Reinhardt shielding. Because if you, yeah, it, it, effect, effectively, it's like a Reinhardt shield that lasts just slightly less long and cannot can't be destroyed. She's almost like it's almost like the same list as Genji, right? Originally, you'd only really use him against a static defense whereas now with zen being used more and him being buff more he's also going to be used more. it feels like more heroes are going to be used now rather than less like last time and with diva's alt i i, I kind of struggled aiming it at first in my video and some people made fun of me rightfully so mm -hmm. but uh now i kind of have the arc down perfectly and there was a, this point on a game that we had that probably will be in my video where there was like a Reinhardt in front, and they're all set up. It was on Numbani, right after you get the first point, right around the corner of that bend. They're set up on, on the car. There's a Reinhardt in front, and they're like, Hi, you're not coming. And I said, Oh, really? Diva all over the top. And I aimed it so that it would explode right on top. I'm putting wait, putting my arm way up here. You can't see that. Uh, right around the. So if the corner is like this, right? So I put it right over the corner so that it could blow up on everything in that radius. And they had to move. So it. it because the fuse is on a certain time where it's aimable now. And yeah. that's very useful on multiple sections of the game because you get these sections where it's like either one, a standoff like that, like, oh, we're going to be static. Oh, you are. <laughs> or in the chaos of everything, you can just kind of randomly toss it up somewhere and they're going to struggle to get away in time. It's not team wipeable by itself, I don't think, but it commands space because you can reliably put it where it needs to be, which I think is what it needed. So... All things considered, good. So uh, we talked about Diva, Zen, McCree. What else? Over time, we spoke about that briefly at the start. Not much to say, really, is there? It's on it's uh, yeah. It's kind of I, I like the way that someone actually has to be on it, or the the bar doesn't reset. That's how it works, isn't it? Like it, yeah. I don't think that was in the patch notes, but we noticed that's how it worked. We, yeah, before, I'm sure that it always went to overtime, even if no one was on it. Whereas now, if no one's on it right in the last second, there is no overtime option. I, I, maybe I'm mistaken, and we're all mistaken, and we don't know what we're talking about, but I'm sure it always used to do that. I think you're right. No. Yeah, I agree. So, to finish up, should we talk about Anna a little bit? Ah, Yes. Yeah, so she, from what I've read in our comment section, just as our Hanzo viewers like to say, And our Genjis, to be fair, Liam. If you're really good with Anna, she's viable, same as, as Hanzo. And I don't think she is. I mean, she does an absolute maximum of 80 DPS, which is nowhere near enough DPS for a sniper that can't move or get out of any fights. Or right? headshot. She or can't. headshot. And her healing is only 75 DPS, and it's not that simple to hit. Her tranquilizer thing's quite good, but it's not very easy to hit. And uh, if Her grenade is great. Her, great. Her, her grenade's good, yeah. Her grenade is good. I think it could do with a bit more splash damage, to be honest. I think it's a little bit small. And then her, her ult is good, but I don't know how good yet. I don't think I've done enough testing to really make a comment on that. Well, the pros definitely say that the ult is amazing and they say it's overpowered um because they they think there's nothing really to combat it i think stun and if you you might have to have your own ana which i don't like 
to counter their Ana ult. Yeah. Because then you, you can put it to sleep and there you go. But otherwise, McCree stun. There isn't any other disable in the game, really, that lasts long enough to outlast the Ana ult. The er, Reinhardt's Earth and Shatter. Junkrat. Junkrat's um, trap. Bad trap, yeah. Yeah. things. That's think, but that's hard to, like, land on someone's feet, you know? Yeah. Uh, McCree stun only lasts a quarter of a second or whatever it is. 0 0.9 seconds. Roadhog stun goes for a second, but then all of a sudden the Reinhardt oh, that just right got here. buffed is in, 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 Yeah, and that's the, probably not a good idea. The that they have is a lot as well. I noticed this yesterday when I was Tracer and I was in someone's face and they were buffed and I was shooting them in the back of the head and it did like no damage. So I, I shot at someone with McCree and hit a couple of headshots and their health fell down quite a lot. But that, I mean, that could just be because it's yeah, McCree. McCree's yeah, so I, powerful, yeah. Anazolt <laughs> isn't even a Yeah, I didn't, I, I noticed it like, I, we've had a lot of people do it with Reinhardt and Reinhardt will just run in and swaying and stuff. And uh, you know, that's kind of entertaining to me, actually. Like I don't mind an alt that adds entertainment value. This <laughs> character that normally doesn't get to do very much and then suddenly he's like, huzzah, right, my turn to run it's in. It's good on Winston I too, actually. Yeah, Because yeah. it lasts like, long enough. And uh, I tell you who it's really good on is, it, you know, it, it's actually, it's re it, I find it quite good when I'm a Korean and someone buffs me. Like I They're like that. Good. Genji yeah. is ridiculous. Yeah, Genji it's it, ridiculous. it's fun. It's fun, but I agree with Frito having to have one, having to have your own honor to counter that. It's, uh, it's dodgy scenarios. I don't, I don't know. I, I I I this is the thing. I don't know if do I, you have to counter it though. I mean, yes, they get free space, but in the same way you launch in Diva Ult over there, you have to move. In the same way, I think it's like that. Like nano boost, ah, and just run. Right. I think that might be the option. Also, if you're concaving properly. Right. If you're concaving properly, they have to commit. Right. That's that they, they are using an ultimate and committing one of their most important characters, whoever they choose, to try and do damage. If your team concaves properly and kills that guy really quickly, see, this is why Reaper might still be useful. If they're concaving properly and you kill him and they've committed and they're actually too, they've overcommitted, they're punishable, I think. It's uh, that happened a few times yesterday where they tried it and they. You know, their push wasn't ready. They weren't synced up properly and we concaved and I'm, you know, I'm tapping people in the head as they're running in or, you know, our Zen is like, well, he might be boosted, but he's also discorded, tap, 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 all that kind of stuff. Like, it's very frag heavy and, and it's, it's, it's the chips fall where they may, depending on who hits their shots. That's what it feels like to me. And Similarly. I don't know if that's necessarily overpowered. I mean, on the pro, but I'm not a pro, right? So at the pro level, it might be it might be ridiculous. I don't know. We'll have to watch. I think it? they're just whining. I think they'll get used to it. I think it's not that much different from a Winston ult, right? It's like, Winston's all in. Let's just stay away from him for a minute. I think it's a very similar thing. Yeah, he thing. does and less I, damage, but it lasts longer. Similar. Yeah, and similar. I don't think that because she has, even if it was OP, right? Even if her ult was OP, it's still not enough to justify her as being OP. It's the same as when people say Hanzo's OP because he gets lucky one shots. He's not OP at all. He needs a rework, and I think that maybe Anna needs a bit of a rework too. I think that. Well, I've put a lot of hours into Anna, so I'll discuss. Yeah. I think we all are in agreement about her, about her ult. Now I'll talk a little bit about her kit, which I talked yeah. about in the original video, and I've put in more hours into her since then. The thing is, I agree. Her grenade is the most viable piece of her kit, and the most um, applicable is the, is the word I want to use that because no matter what, if it hits something, it's likely having an effect. Whereas the sleep darts hard to hit her rifles hard to hit. And that, uh, has much more value. But the problem with that is it has a bit of conflicting synergy in her kit because ideally you want to be sniping in the back, but you have this grenade that needs to hit multiple targets, them or you, which kind of causes an error. I've seen every single Ana player play the same way, and I get in the same position where you're playing more mid-range than is comfortable, ultimately, because you need to be able to hit those grenades. And you need to be able to hit your, your sleep dart, because the farther you get, the harder that sleep dart is to hit. It's similar to maybe a May shot, but I maybe it's because it's on shift. I find it a bit, whatever. It, a May shot, a Roadhog hook, it's kind of similar. Um, Should it be right click, do you think? Yeah, but then you can't scope. I think yeah. that's why they had to put it there. I, anyway, whatever. I've gotten better with the sleep dart, but it still is one of the harder things to hit. It's slower than Roadhog's hook, and it's about probably the speed of Maze shot. But I feel like 
for whatever reason, I can hit maze shot easier than the sleep dart. Maybe it's because you have multiple tries at it, and it, I just ha yeah. like I don't realize I miss half the time or whatever. The first shot gives you a feel for it as well when you do that, right? So the first shot gives you a feel for where you this next shot should Good be point. aiming, whereas with this you don't get Good that. Point. Correct. So the thing is, there's such a skill component to the character that maybe she's only viable in the best player's hands and in the majority of the community i don't think she's that good i will say this the 80 damage thing doesn't sound like a lot but when you're at long range it's good for a support because yeah, it doesn't drop off yeah. I, right. I actually think it's good because it doesn't drop off because against a farah at really long range it feels as good uh, i i ah, darn i wish i did it before this show but i, I was looking at the damage that widow does right now with the nerfed body shot it takes about 70 percent charge on her rifle to do i'm gonna guess a number here i think 84 or something which is similar to anna but anna doesn't have to charge and can shoot bam 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 so i have to do the numbers but i think anna might have a faster time to kill at range than widowmaker with doing body shots boy that sounds fair oh widow's overpowered of course but yeah but as uh, you say you can't keep her at long range because you need to use the utility and then when you're but if they have a faro though Anna has a job now because she can play longer range because you you want that component to your team. Which Farah dies to everything, which, yeah, which is bad for Farah in this meta. I think it, it's too think, rough. Do you for think Farah. in this meta, Farah? Do you think it would be reasonable to ha have her have two hundred health and fifty armor? I don't think that's outrageous. Like I, I don't like play... if she can move faster. Maybe I, I don't. don't I don't. I don't. I don't play Farah, but I really feel for Farah plays because I think. In terms of character design, she's she's at she's at the top end of skill gap. I think a good farer has a lot of mechanical skill, and I think she Thank in you. this in the current meta of this PTR. I mean, she has, you know, against the DPSs that are in the game, like I mean, we used to double soldier against farers, and she died pretty quick. But now if I'm playing McCree and Liam's playing Soldier, Farah's not going to get a look in. I'm sorry, she's just not. It's kind it's of opposite as it was before, because before, yeah. the way the meta worked is Farah dictated it. It's like, man, we have to deal with this Farah. Now it's yeah. like, I want to pick Farah, but it turns out every character can shoot up now all of a sudden and deals yeah. tons of range damage, and Zen's viable and all X, Y, and Z. Like, the thing was with Zen being viable is now tanks shred stuff too. Like, it's yeah. the game's so frag-heavy, you have to realize. Where's, like, Mercy where's Zen. Roadhog right now? Like, I've, I specialized in being able to McCree jump headshot dodging hooks roadhogs i took great pleasure in killing someone with 600 health and killing them 1v1 it's not always viable all right sometimes you'll just get caught and made to look a bit stupid but i enjoyed that i saw that as a fair fight he's got 600 health and an immobilized one shot all right i've got nothing essentially aside from mechanical skill and headshots and now if he's discorded i'm like you better not challenge me you better not challenge me. I will kill You're you. You're a punching bag. Him with a yeah, Discord horse is like free you. kill. I will kill you. And when a Roadhog kills me with a hook that's good or whatever, it annoys me. I'm like, I shouldn't die to that character. Think about that for a moment. Think about that. I'm thinking I can take this 600 health from you and dodge your one attack that is a, seriously a threat to me. And you're dead in three sh three headshots, or whatever the number is. If I'm damage boosted and he's discorded, it's like three shots or something, or like. What what it's it's dumb, right? So in this matter, where does Roadhog sit? Where does where does the character happening. sit? It's not like Farah. Like Farah needs like more armor, probably a movement boost, the potential to move through the air quicker and more often to be able to fit into this meta. I would uh, say. I would say okay. I think maybe with maybe with fifty health and then seventy five of it is shields. Maybe we work it that way. And I'm shields reduce incoming damage. I'm guess or armor does. I'm, yeah, I'm guessing. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't think we have to go crazy with it because I still think Farah is good. It's just she has to play in her lane more. And that's exactly what I would say about Roadhog as well. Whereas in the tank-heavy healer meta, which was the previous one that we just had, he's like, oh, I'm Roadhog. I just, <laughs> just you know, the cock of the box. Nothing's going to kill me. Da, 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 da. I'm out in the middle of the map. What are you going to do? <laughs> oh, Widow, body shot. I'll stand here for 10 minutes. I'll heal in front of you. Like that, That's <laughs> yeah. the way it worked. Uh, and, and so now he has to play more like Pudge in dota where he's not a great fighter but he gets that hook insta kill like insta kills are so great in overwatch that they have yeah. to be reined in which ultimately made me say that the widow nerf was okay because even if you can't if you spend like 
it feels like forever. Multiple minutes going for headshots, miss, miss. And then one, once, oh, bam, I got him. Oh, man up. Then all of a sudden you're a man up. It, it's as if you just did hundreds of damage over that course of the whole time. So I think Roadhog works in the same way where he's going to play the off positions and surprise and catch you out. And again, all of these things spread out the game more, I feel. Because it's like, Roadhog, yeah. you can't afford to be in the mix of everything because you get Discord focused down easy peasy. You better play him smart and hidden away and like Pudge, essentially, where you're like and lurking in the shadows. As well. I've seen that a lot. I mean, if you're an Anna and there's a Roadhog in your face, you can actually win as her because you just shoot him once or twice and someone else is focusing him as well. He goes to heal, you stop the heal, and he's just stood there doing this and not getting anything. So It's dry. <laughs> <laughs> I think it is. Oh, right now. <laughs> Uh, uh, that's disgusting. So I think Anna, interestingly enough, with the way the game plays now, might be okay. In the Death Ball healer meta, I think she would have been useless. But now that she... Uh, now with the way the rest of the game plays, she sort of like fits into that into a nice way. But I still think in a limited role... And most of the value being tied up in her ultimate at the end and of the day. And on defense as well. She's not good on attacking, I don't think. It's too, too much changing. and Yeah, it's pretty difficult. You you yeah. On defense, because you always know you can back up, because yeah. you're always conceding ground, that's why she's a bit better. Whereas on attack, it's like, I'm trying to find my way. Oh, they have flank. And like I said now, flank. I said this in my video before, flankers are better on defense now because of Zen or whatever. So they can throw a Winston or a Genji on you and uh, playing on defense. And I think Ana is worthless. Now the pros may redefine everything we just said and, and prove me wrong and say like, no, they're not good on uh, a defense or whatever. But I think if, the, if, if pros tried to use Ana on attack, that's how it would work. You just have one. Fl All you need is pretty much a flanker, and she's countered, as far as I'm concerned, because she will never be able to really set up. And then if she's playing in the death ball, like she'll have to if they have a flanker, why not have a Lucio then? I, I, yeah. That's the yeah. way I feel. And her healing isn't that great, although her bomb heals as well, doesn't it? But I don't know yes. how much. Well, the, the thing is, here's an interesting point about Ana. This might be my last point. Her, her burst of heal can be faster than any other healer. I think that's important to note. Because when, and that's another thing that sort of counters ultimates in some way, because when things were going down in the games where I was playing Ana, uh, I could clutch, drop my grenade on, a te on teammates, and then shoot them. And all of a sudden, boom, it's like, I have to, uh, what's the health boost, I think? Maybe it's 50%, maybe it's double. I think it's, yeah, I think it's 50, actually. Okay, so instead of 70, it does 140, like, t -t -t -t. so in a, an entire second, you have 140 health. And that is effectively double any of the damage anybody does in the game. So in terms of that real small sliver of effectiveness, oh, and you got to think too, her healing grenade heals for 100. So yeah, it does it 100. Healing as well, doesn't it? More healing received. For that's, us, yeah, so. that's what we were just, that was just saying. Yeah, yeah. So it, 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 it heals 100 and doubles your rifle heal. So... It's 250 total. That's an entire character's yeah. health, right? In a second. So she can go boom, boom, and heal, heal all that. So in that way, she's better than Mercy and Lucio. Because even Lucio's Amp It Up only does 40 heal per second, but it does everybody. And again, what is that most useful on? It's useful oh, on saving your tanks in battle, I've noticed. Because if I'm behind a Reinhardt or, Luc or uh, Winston... And it's on the final on a point, and he's getting attacked, and I'm able to stay alive behind him. I almost can heal him indefinitely as long as my grenades up. Boom! All of his health's back. Oh, we're willing him down, willing him down, and then he'll then he'll have his shield. And then, so in this meta, Anna is the only thing actually that can keep stuff alive. Interestingly enough, but is that good enough? I don't know. But it is an interesting aspect of her game that I don't think I've heard anybody talk about yet. The only pro the only problem I see is that traditionally supports are easier characters to play and they've been really important in the game. Supports have been, I, I, before you could say, you know, Hanzo Instapix, not justifiable, but Mercy Instapix, definitely justifiable, right? Your team definitely will need one. Lucio's never going to be a bad pick, all that kind of stuff. The thing with Ana is, is the same kind of, as a teammate, it's say if you're solo queuing or you're five queuing and you get one random, right? This happens to us quite a lot. So if you get the one random guy 
auto, obviously in the PTR, it's single pick only, and they pick Anna, and they're not the same as Widow, the same as Hanzo, the same as all these high mechanical skill characters. If they're not doing their job or they're inefficient at their job, you lose. Simple. It happened to it, us exactly that, didn't it? We we got yeah, and, and that is that's the problem with her. It's not a problem. Great. We actually have a guy that plays Mercy who also plays Widow and McCree. And he has fairly good he, he's good, right? But he's a better Mercy. I don't mind him playing her because I know he'll, he'll hit shots. I don't mind you playing her, right? Because you're traditionally one of the DPS or whatever, you're one of the highest skilled guys on the team. Don't mind that. I do mind the level 25 first game in competitive pit, picks on and no one can do anything about it. You know, I do have a problem with Who that. Who was he dropping but, nano boost on? I remember, I remember that too. I, it was on someone like useless, like someone really, like genuinely useless. Maybe remember. they'll need to incorporate a vote change in the meta. What, so you can just ban, a, ban no, no, someone from yeah, picking a character? Yeah, I mean, what other option is there? Oh, what, that you think... Man. That you think a teammate should change, so you put up a vote for the team. Like, should our yeah, Ana change yeah. to Mercy? Yeah, no, <laughs> no, no, <not laughs> yes. Make sure they just change, even if it's not a specific character. I don't think that's a terrible idea. In rank, yeah, that could lead to do, like vote. doors of trolling and stuff. I, I, yeah, I don't know. I don't know it's annoying. What? It's annoying, but it's you like once you get up that. in the ranks. Once you get up in the ranks in ranked play. Troll picks, or I'm only gonna, I, I, I'm no. a Hanzo main, or I'm Wrong. a Genji main. It's not gonna happen. It's not gonna happen. With higher skill players, they don't do that. They understand the game and they go, What does the team need? No. Actually, Wrong. I mean, we, you should know, man, we played in a CSGO all the way up to Global Elite, and how many kids do we meet that know nothing about the game yet somehow have got up? They'll be exactly I, I think Overwatch is a harder game than CSGO. No, I think be people that are friend. better at Overwatch. Uh, have to you have to understand how the game works more you cannot cap like cs is still all right there's loads of strategy i'm i'm gonna trigger so many people here but cs if you're mechanically gifted right if you're simple you can carry right even at like global elite matchmaking rank which isn't that high most of the best people play in like fpl or whatever right so Overwatch isn't like that. Overwatch requires you to understand how the game works, I think. It this requires. is a great conversation and a topic we may cover on another show, but yeah. we needed to do Let's this one do first because it was PTR. We thought about doing this conversation about... Because <laughs> yeah. some people do think Overwatch is an easy game. And I'm like, have you played as much as me? Or do you even play ranked? Do you know what you're talking about? It's not an easy game. And I think most people who play it uh, understand that. But it's an interesting conversation to have. And we yeah. may have it with with some friends of ours on another time. But otherwise, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it, share it with your friends, look at the other channel content that we have. We post each and every day your Overwatch podcast, episode one maybe, or three, five, whatever we're on. I think it's three. I think this is the third. It's the first proper one. First really. one with this cute little format that we made up. So uh, let us know feedback on the format too and anything you want us to cover, leave in the comments. Otherwise, I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.